you feeling, DJ? I feel pretty good. How you doing? <laughs> I always feel confident going into a game, and um, it doesn't really matter how many reps I get throughout the week. Uh, I was able to still run around here and do a lot of things that uh, I need to do to keep the door open for Sunday. And um, I'm excited to get the rest of today and tomorrow to continue to improve my body and see where I at on Sunday. Uh, no, I, I think, uh, like you guys know, standard is a standard here no matter who's out there. So uh, I don't think that you can push or pull one way or the other depending on who else is out there. Was there a single incident on Sunday that you got hurt on? Or was it just uh, a little bit of both. I think it was just uh, a tweak here or there and then continue to try to push through it and just trying to be smart at the end of the day ultimately. Uh, it's a long season. Yeah, Jameer's been a spark ever since he's been here. I think you've seen throughout the preseason, whether it's special teams or playing as an outside backer, he's been able to provide a change of pace for us as an outside linebacker, and he plays the run really well, and his pass respect is developing too. So I'm um, just continuing to see progression from him and excited to see what he can bring to the table. TJ, he said his hands were really impressive. How important are those now? I used to hearing Keith uh, compliment young guys like that. So, <laughs> uh, he, like I said, it, as the longer you're around guys like this and if, like me, Melvin, and, and Alex, and if you want to absorb as much information as you can, you can. We're all open books, and he's been a guy who's asked a lot of questions, who's paid conscious, close attention to all the drills that we've done, and you see the improvement on a week-to-week -week basis, and uh, he's only going to con continue to get better. Does that get you excited when you see guys that's working that hard? I, yeah, I mean, we're peers at the end of the day, but yeah, I, I'm always happy to see guys not only in the building, but in our room specifically as an outside linebacker excel. And um, it's just the more opportunities you get, the more you have to deliver. And I feel very confident with having them out there. Mike said that foreign injuries can be really tricky and depend on a, a guy by guy basis, but what is it about that injury specifically that makes it hard to kind of maybe gauge where you are and how quickly you can? I think it's any soft tissue injury, to be honest with you, and, and this isn't going around playing PB football, it's just playing with guys that do this for a living, so it's just trying to be smart, um, but at the same time, just knowing your body more than anything, and like I said, I, I felt uh, like I was able to do a good amount this week to leave the door open for Sunday. When you say the door's open, do you think it's like cracked? Like uh, it's open. Do you feel like you're going to have to take more explosiveness and get off when you play if you play on Sunday? That, that will never be a question with me. If I'm going to play, I'm going to play uh, like I always do. You're a guy that really does like to play. How frustrating was it for you to have to sit out the second half on Sunday and end that game? Yeah, it's always tough. You never want to miss time. And like I said, you only get so many, you only get so many opportunities to play a game um, each season. So anytime you miss any time, obviously, it's frustrating. But like, it always comes back to being smart so you don't miss extended periods of time as well. You guys didn't make turnovers last week too. Was there any like messaging like, uh, as far as like looking around the room this week about, like, hey, you got to step that part of the game up and get that, get that result on the board? That kind of just comes back to being professionals. Everybody here knows what the standard is, and we know it's not acceptable to not get turnovers, to not get those splash plays. So that's for sure something that we're going to focus on as a defense. But I don't think it's anything that really needs to be said vocally. We all understand what the mission is as a defense. Sure. I think he's a just an all-around really talented running back, to be honest with you. And um, I don't know why he seems to be overlooked, but he is a little bit. And uh, I think he's he's earned my respect. He's earned the respect of every guy in this building. And uh, he can he's an all-purpose back. He can pass protect. He can scat out of the backfield. He can run between the tackles, outside the tackles. Um, he's always been a tough tackle every time we faced him. And um, that's what telling the guys, the rookies last year, the young guys, that we didn't really get to face him. So. Um, it's for sure going to be a challenge for us just because he is a true multi-purpose running back. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks DJ. what did you do with your first touchdown ball from last week? Um, I left it on the field, but then they ended up giving it to me, and I just, it's in my locker now. I just leave it in there. Do you have any like, special plans for it or going to play in the case with your mom, anything like that? No, I didn't really think about it. I'm going to leave it there, though, until I think about it. So it's just in my locker. It's going to be in there for a while? Yeah. No, yeah. It's gonna be there for a minute, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm just gonna leave it there. Maybe it's a, a locker room uh, trophy. Just leave it in there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you.
Yeah, that's um, yeah, they got two good, uh, two good interior guys. That's that's really good. Um, I don't know the name exactly, but uh, they have two two really good interior guys, and that disrupts disrupts a lot of stuff, especially in the run too. So um, as always, as every week, there's always good players. Um, we just got to do a job of uh, try to do our best to take out those players and um, win the game. He played here? Bro, they they talk about him a lot, but I, I wonder why they knew so much about him. I didn't know he played here. Um, but yeah, they talked about him a lot. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. That makes sense, though. <laughs> makes sense. Now, have you heard, uh, heard from a lot of people about the stiff arm last week? You said did it, did I? Have you, have you heard from a, a lot of people about the insight in that play from the University of Georgia? I don't, I don't really go on social media that much, so, like, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I saw those everywhere, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I did see. Have you heard a lot from the fantasy football crowd two weeks a year? Uh, have I heard a lot about them? Like, people texting their friends. No, nah, well, one friend did, but like, uh, but that's different from yeah, 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 that, yeah, you know, that's a whole yeah, yeah. One friend, one, one friend did. He was kind of upset at me week one, but I mean, other than that, though, it's cool. It's, it's cool, though. It's cool. Yeah, not that many people, though. Yeah. But. His name is Trey, actually. If y'all want to know, his name is Trey, but his real name is Whirlington. If y'all want to know that, so if y'all ever put this out, say Whirlington said. I mean, he's. I mean, I hung up on him, of course, yeah. but I mean, but like, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Do you feel like you were building like, a passive chemistry with Ben with the, the stiff arm, the touchdown? I know that's something that you got that you, that you wanted to build with. Yeah, we, I mean, he, he, we're building chemistry, uh, of course, especially later in the games. Um, almost if it's like, you know, he, he's trusting me more. Um, but, you know, it's week two. We got to keep building and, um, you know, hopefully you know, we, we, can, we can keep building for what we did last week in the past game wise. Not the end result. You have said that quite a few times. If you said from week one to week two, you just felt more comfortable. Yeah, so yeah, we're. The game. You said exactly. Week two, it felt like the run fits were a little better. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's like the big thing you hope to see in week three? Well, always improving from week two, you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, if, I, if we improve, put on the film, we improve from week two, and, um, and, and we don't take steps back, we always take steps forward. It might not seem a lot to like, you know, the fans and stuff like that, but you know, when we watch film, it's, it's a lot. But as long as we keep improving and keep getting better, then we are going to find our identity and then we're going to capitalize on that. 10 carries for you in that game. Uh, are you guys who can sometimes get better on like carry 15 or carry 16 as you wear down the defense or, or build momentum? Or are you not that kind of back? Am I not that kind of back? I mean, um, guys, I guess you're ready to go from carry one and other guys say they get better as the game goes on, right? Well, I feel like all running backs get better, get better as the game carries on because um, you have a better feel of the defense and how they're doing things. Um, am I that type of back? Yeah, I am. But, you know, that's, that's not something I'm, I'm really thinking about. It's just like just getting better and helping the team win. If it's more than 10 carries, it's fine. If it's 10 carries, and I mean, as long as we improve, then that's all that matters. How did you burn it? Go ahead. Brent, time where you can get everything in an instant. Is it tough to trust, trust the process, if you will, or know that you're getting better and not see yeah. the immediate results? Yeah, so that's the thing right there. It's, it's, I mean, you want immediate results, especially – um, being a rookie and, you know, you want to try to, me personally, want to try to find a way to impact the game and the team. But, you know, you, you got to realize that it takes time um, because I mean, you're, just, you're just new at something. So you're just really learning the small stuff that, that you need to know to make those big plays or to, to be like that person you want to be. So, um, you know, people always want, you know, the end result, but they never, you know, really look at the, the long result, the long process it is to get the end result. And that's where, we're at, where I'm at right now, um, you know, the players are going to come eventually. You know, I, I know I can make plays, but, you know, it's just me learning it. People forget, I guess, that this is my first, first year, you know. But, I mean, it's cool, though, you know, the expectations, the expectations. So, you know, I'm not really tripping on that. But, um, yeah, it's just learning, really, right now. Was that the same process for you in Alabama? That yes, ma'am. used to, to things and, and it, not seeing immediate results just from yeah, that's exactly what, like, when I, when I walked away from the week one uh, against the Bills, I said that in my head, too. Um, in the week two, you know, I realized that, you know, it, in, the, in the sport, you know, it's, it's just you want to do something so bad, but at the same time you got to realize that, like, it, it is a learn. You, you, you got to go through certain stages before you get there. Um, I think every player has that done that from good to bad. You know, every great player ha has had at times um, adversity they got to face. But, you know, 
for me, my, my, my freshman year at Alabama, um, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about the, the college level coming from high school. And then my first year here, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know about the NFL level because the only time you could practice it is in the game, you know what I mean, or like or at that level. So, uh, like I said, we're, we're, I'm going to get there, though. You know. Let's go last week. Week. I mean, I think I think you know, there's pros and cons of both. Um, you know, me me playing every snap, of course, is a is is the is the best way for me to learn, I guess. Um, but uh, I guess some of the the cons is that like you know, whenever I do make a mistake, you know, there's not gonna be like a coach there to like to say, hey, you need to do this, this, this. Um, you really got to learn yourself. Um, but you know, I, I always feel like the best way to learn is is me going out there making the mistakes, um, so you can build from it. But uh. Oh. No, you cool, would you? I was gonna say you put out a lot of a lot of pass routes. You really need you know, really running backs you know, on routes. Um, I do? Yeah, it's like first second. Yeah. Hey, uh, there's a stat for that? You can find everything in the that you want to do. Why is that a stat? Uh, she pulls way too much time in her hands. Then. That's what it is. They got way too much time in her. That's exactly what it is. Hey, was it PFF? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, but <laughs> Is that, I mean, is that a way when things you know are, are clicking perfectly in the running game to get the ball more in space? Is that a way you can you can adapt and, and make more plays and be more involved in that kind of thing? Is a different is a different style of running and make a play. When you yeah. So like a lot of the passes that I get is technically a run because it's it's not like it's like a deep ball. It's like a four yard pass three yard pass, five yard pass. So it's technically a run, but it's just, you know, obviously uh, to have more space to work with. Um, and, that's, and that's what I always like. If I could have more, like a lot more space to work with. Because, you know, sometimes when you run, it's, it's, you got to understand it's the NFL. So some of the holes is like, you know, it's not that big. And, you know, sometimes you just got to cram it. Um, but um, I guess I didn't know like, why that's a stat. But I, I guess I don't even know how to answer it. I guess, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, you guys. Thank you. Not, not something that I'm too concerned about addressing again. All the parties involved know what happened. Uh, the team knows what happened. And uh, I, really with that situation, I'd just like to say thank you to Coach T. And thank you to my teammates just for having my back. Everybody that saw the situation and, and uh, was in the game, knew what happened, knew what took place, and why it went the way that it did. And, uh, you, know, um, you know, looking back on the situation, maybe I could keep my cool, better hold my head. But when you're presented with uh, circumstances that you're not familiar with, Sometimes you go into foreign territory, and that's just kind of what happens. So, uh, moving forward, I was behind me, and I'm looking forward to week week three. Mike Tomlin has a reputation as being a player's coach. Did you learn anything different about him when you were going through that situation? What did you kind of see? Uh, I think it's just black and white, and uh, and I mean that, which is is no gray area. It's either either right and wrong. Uh, you address certain situations and circumstances, but there's always an action and there's always a reaction. Um, I think everything. Um, I think everything that, that transpired this past week has shown me that uh, I have more people that have my back than I thought, you know? And uh, most people that can stand up and attest to who I am and who I am as a player and the character and, and uh, the man that I've been in this league for the past eight seasons. So uh, it, it's, it's just been cool, uh, just people reaching out and like I said, Coach T having my back. Which Raiders player was it? Um, you know, it's not, not really on me to, to talk about that at that point in time. I'm focused on Cincinnati players. I think it's a continuous uh, uh, learning curve that, that we that we uh, dealing with right now, and, and it's not not a bad thing at all. It's just something that we have to keep on pressing through and pressing forward. Uh, and when you're learning something, it, it means that you're fixing old problems and finding new problems. And it's going to always be that in the NFL. And uh, now it's about how, how fast we can correct problems. And I think. You know, the coaches do a good job of coaching us up. Uh, we have a, a good quarterback, a great quarterback, and he's a great leader back there helping us get get that together. And uh, we just all five come together and think it's one. You mentioned the quarterback. Yeah, it's definitely something that's been addressed. Um, you know, there's no excuse for that. You, you never make excuses for that. We just had to do a better job of doing it. And that's, that's, it's just action. So you have talked about the teammates.
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it was it was a focal point. Um, I, I mean, we we all come in, we all talk as as a team, so uh, it's been addressed as a team. Is that been the case everywhere you've been in your NFL career, or is that something that's still here? Uh, um, I think it's a mantra uh, within the whole NFL, but I, you know, maybe a little bit of a different demographic here. Um, but uh, you know, the the status the, the status quo is the status quo. Um, you had to go out there and you do what's expected of you and, and, and fill that status quo. Is Melvin Ingram the loudest teammate you've ever had? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> Eric Ebron might be. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the time it takes for an offensive line. Is there anything that can accelerate that process? What can you do to speed up the process? Uh, continue to stay healthy and, and continue to play with one another. Uh, continuity within games and, and continuity within the line, uh, playing together as a unit for stringing along games and stringing along practices. I think that's important. I think you see your biggest jumps and your biggest strides when people play longer together and then they get some film and now you can sit down and assess what you're doing well and then you can see what you don't do so well and you can harp on that in practice and, and get better at it. Are you seeing some of the rookies evolve between Dan Moore and Kinder Green? Are you seeing growth from week to week with those guys? Definitely, uh, you know, it, it's, it's always going to be growth and it's, it's growing pains with that. Sometimes you deal with situations that you didn't expect. Sometimes you prepare for one thing and then, you know, somebody hits you with something that you wasn't exactly prepared for. And you have to learn to adjust on the fly. I think that's the biggest thing in the NFL is being able to adjust to what you thought would, 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 would happen versus what's actually happening. And um, to be able to differentiate, differentiate when to go from uh, one technique to another technique is, is a learning thing, and I think we're in that process of learning as a unit. And uh, it's, it's more than just the rookies; it's all of us learning as a unit to um, just to be in the right right spaces, right positions, and, and have your body placed in the right you know the right spots. Do you guys feel a sense of urgency in trying to learn this quickly, knowing that you are in the middle of the season and quarterbacks taking ten hits, and you know can't necessarily withstand having that kind of pressure? We got. Oh, definitely the the. the the objective each week is to keep your quarterback clean as possible. Um, no guy goes out there and wants to give up hits, give up sacks. It's never a thing. Um, everybody comes here, and I think everybody has it on their mind to go out there and protect. Um, and it's not just about the quarterback. It's about protecting the wide receivers and protecting the halfbacks and any ball carrier that we have at that point in time. Um, you know, you want to be the big brother of the team as an offensive lineman, and I think we need to adopt that attitude and, and move as such. I mean, I, I can't wait for Zach to get back, man. I'd just be happy just to get him on the field and be, health, be healthy. Um, I know what it's like to not be able to, to do what you really want to do and some, something that you look forward to doing. And um, I'm just rooting for him, man. I'm just hoping he has a, a successful return. Last one thing that maybe Kendrick Green is doing that's home. It's not just the other um, he goes out there and he makes majority of the calls for the for the line. He's directing the line. He's telling people where to go. Um, I think that's phenomenal for a person that's been on his team for maybe what four months or so. And um, I think he's just going to keep going to keep getting better. How do you relate this to how you do when you were a young player and every week it's going to be on the line and it's just like, here's this guy to your left as a work for the center, not just wants to win, just wants to you know, help him hold it. Yeah, right. That's, that's got to be a big task. Definitely, um, it's, it's, it's patience, and that, that's something that, that wears thin in, the, in this league. But I knew what it was like when you have 15 people telling you how to do one thing. You know, the message gets kind of construed, and uh, you, you get it's a little unfamiliar when you don't know exactly what to or how to. So just 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 um, being a, a ear more than anything. Sometimes you can help people out listening more than you can talking. And uh, just just asking him, you know, what he need help with, you know, if I see anything, make the corrections as I see fit, and let our coaches handle that. Um, that's why we have some pretty phenomenal coaches. Um, I think they're here for a reason, and I, you know, I kind of just just let that go as at bay. All right, appreciate it, Trey. Thank you. Thank you.